Welcome to another day in the Matrix. This is Waters Above, and welcome to another eclipse season. Kicking things off with the Fed cutting rates by 50 basis points at yesterday's FOMC meeting on the lunar eclipse. And as you can see, the markets have immediately responded bullish to this decision. And as we speak, the Dow Jones and the S&P are at new all-time highs yet again. And the S&P is on its way to my next key target I revealed almost a year ago of 5,900, synchronizing with the 59 code for this year of the dragon. 59. So we have a lot to cover in today's video and some important dates to decode. I know everyone wants to know what's coming next for these markets. So that's exactly what we're going to focus on in today's video. So let's get into it. And if you're new here, we do cryptocurrency technical analysis and combine it with gamatria, numerology and astrology to understand these markets. Feel free to subscribe and turn on the bell notification to stay updated on when new videos come out. And make sure to give this video a like and share this channel with other conscious beings to help grow our community. And with that being said, let's take the clear pill. So in my last video that I put out, I put emphasis on this past weekend, specifically the date of September 15th, Sunday. Because it had a 68 double digit date numerology, which I was calling the 68, the war code. And on this day, we had the second assassination attempt of Donald Trump, which happened exactly 64 days after his first assassination attempt on July 13th, which is very interesting because his birthday this year also has a 64 date numerology the 14th of June, as you can see here. So we had this number 64 clearly symbolic for him specifically with the mirror of 64 being the number 46 and he was born in 46 whilst Kamala Harris was born in 1964, the mirror of that and this number that we keep bringing up. And what's interesting about 1964 was that it was also a year of the dragon, and not just any year of the dragon, it was the wood dragon, which were also in this time around as well. So very fascinating how there's synchronicity here. We'll be in the year of the wood dragon until January 28th, 2025, when we'll enter the year of the snake, which means that this upcoming election on November 5th will natu naturally be in this year of the dragon. And that's exactly why Kamala was brought into the script for this election. And now it's a repeat of Trump against a woman, just like the election he won against Hillary Clinton in 2016. And for those who want to know more about my thoughts on this upcoming election, I actually decoded it. It's available now over at patreon.com slash waters above for the mastermind community membership. And by joining over there, you'll also get access to over 180 podcasts, 150 full length live streams, weekly text updates on the market, also live notifications of whenever I buy or sell any of my investments, as well as access to our Discord server for community group chat, where you could come hang out with like-minded individuals who are sharing similar interests. It's a really unique thing we're doing over there, and I'm so grateful to be experiencing these times with such an incredible community we built over the years. Really appreciate every single one of you. Again, the Mastermind Community membership is available at patreon.com slash waters above, and I just released that U.S. election decoded, and soon I plan to release a decode for this upcoming solar eclipse in October that we've been talking about all year. It's the Ring of Fire annular solar eclipse on Rosh Hashanah, the Hebrew New Year, as well as potentially a brand new What I'm Investing in special, where I dedicate my weekly Red Pill podcast to covering all the projects that I'm personally invested in and my portfolio breakdown, plus my investment thesis for this current bull run as we enter the year 2025. With that podcast alone, it's worth the value of the entire membership since I go over 20 different charts in that podcast. It gives you like a masterclass on technical analysis. So the Patreon for the rest of September into October is going to be absolutely packed with value. Now, getting back to this code, clearly this second assassination attempt on Trump is a sign of war. And 
you're all aware that there are many agendas at play here. It can be looked at from so many different angles, but it's clear that this 64 code that we were talking about is significant for rituals for the remainder of this year, or at least until the election, especially in regards to Trump or politics and this election cycle. So with that in mind, I want you to keep October 10th on your radar, and we're going to get into that new date for you all to consider October 10th for this year, and it has the 64 double-digit date numerology, just like Trump's birthday this year and the first assassination attempt in Butler, PA. And another reason I'm considering this date is because of the code that this recent Sunday uh, event gave us on Sunday, September 15th, with the second assassination attempt that happened in Florida. And that's because September 15th leaves 107 days left in the year, and that 107 ties to the 28th prime number. So we're getting code here from this event that could be used for future dates. And if we look at October 10th, you'll see it's 82 days left in the year, the mirror of that number 28. And if we were to include the end date, connecting this October 10th date to Trump's birthday this year on the 14th of June, you're going to see they're 119 days apart. That's your 119 code, the 911 code, and you all know what happened with that. And that had a significant ritual of three. We had Tower 1, Tower 2, followed by Building 7. That was your threes, and that ended up being the 117. We talked about this, how September is actually the seventh month, because Septem in Latin is seven. Go check out my last video if you haven't. But... Since I'm bringing up the sevens, we have this 119 code, how it happened in threes. We had two assassination attempts on Trump. So do you see where I'm going with this? And we're bringing up this connection because of the double digit date numerology, both having the 64 and all of these 64 connections for him this year. And you'll see they're 17 weeks apart. And this is esoteric because 17 is the seventh prime number. So if you watch my last video, then you'll know the significance of the number seven in all of these rituals. Definitely check that out if you haven't already. Well, not including the end date, we can take from October 10th, the date that we are decoding to this upcoming Rosh Hashanah, which will be the Hebrew New Year. And you can see they are seven days apart. This will also be during our upcoming annular solar eclipse I mentioned in the intro of today's video. And notice how Rosh Hashanah leaves 89 days left in the year. This is very significant because when we take this Rosh Hashanah and we connect, oh, we take this 89 code, excuse me, and we consider this date that we're decoding October 10th and connect it to the first assassination attempt on the 13th of July, you'll see that they're 89 days apart. And that number 89 is significant. If you've been watching these videos over the past couple months or throughout the year, you'll know why. It's because 89 is the 24th prime number. And we're in the Gregorian year of 24 and in the Hebrew year of 5784, which adds up to 24. So there's plenty of code to consider here. But we're just focusing on a single date, on one specific date tied to a specific theme. And that's how we dial in our decodes. And we all know they like to do things in threes. And with two attempts on his life, at this point, I would not be shocked if there's a third. And this is a pretty standout date, I would say. Now, immediately following Trump's second assassination attempt this past Sunday, moving into the new week, we had a series of events happening over in Lebanon, and uh, effectively pagers exploding and allegedly even mobile devices, including iPhones. And this all started on the 17th of September and it continued into the following day, September 18th. And new reports started flooding in mentioning it's not just pagers, it's also laptops, radios, motorcycles, and even a number of cars have been reported to exploded uh, randomly. And I'm sure many of you here remember several months ago mentioning the key dates to look out for in regards to specifically the nation of Iran and this war. And before the events happened, I called out the dates of their drone strike against Israel in advance and the death of the former president of Iran, Raisi. 
Those dates I shared here publicly in advance, and I put emphasis specifically on the nation of Iran because of what my earlier decodes were revealing to me in regards to this whole World War III saga that's playing out. And I bring up this regarding Iran because once Iran had these events, I brought up Lebanon to watch out for next in several of my live streams, videos, and podcasts. And here we are. I'll assume these recent events in Lebanon will push them into war. And the second remote attack that happened on September 18th was on a date that I actually brought up. I brought this up in my last video, and it was tied to October 7th of last year with Israel declaring war against Hamas. And you'll see this October 7th date to the 18th of September. Again, brought this up in my last video. Check it out if you haven't already. It's the 1111 code. 11 months and 11 days apart. So, with that out of the way, next is Egypt and Turkey. You heard it here. Two very important layers to World War Zionism. Interestingly enough, by the code, if we start going into the gematra of all of this, I want to show you some syncretism here. We have Lebanon giving us this 28 code. Also, Egypt, just brought it up moments ago, 28. Also, Turkey, 28, as well as Zion, 28 in the same cipher, as well as Israel, 28 in the same cipher, as well as Zionism, 28, same cipher as in Lebanon. That is who is under the crosshair. It will be after Lebanon, which we're experiencing now, it will be Turkey and then Egypt's involvement. Now, when we're talking about this 28, just to give you a quick lesson on this, 28 esoterically is two eights. That's the power number 88. It's tied to the sun and the moon. With the sun, you have the analema, the figure eight pattern. This is talking about the sun and the moon, which is the physical essence of the simulacrum and the spiritual essence. So eight times eight is 64. And remember earlier, I mentioned how 1964 was our last year of the wood dragon. The exact Chinese year we're in now, the year that Kamala Harris was born, also the mirror number would be 46, the year Trump was born. And that's who is facing off in this political royal rumble. And since I brought that up regarding the year 1964, I want to actually check in with the S&P 500 chart. It's kind of celebrate the fact that we are at new all-time highs today and get into this chart of 1964 during the year of the Wood Dragon, which is the year that, as I said, we're in now. And what's interesting uh, about this year is that out of all the dragon years, this was one of the few that did not have a correction into early November. Uh, and that's what the typical pattern we see during dragon years. We see that we actually top out in September, kind of keel over with that micro top, head into about 10 days after the election with a correction and then we pivot out of that make our kind of higher lows and then we head to another like higher to finish off the year well in this case of 1964 as you can see in september we pretty much just kept chugging to the upside over and over and over and over again all through october and even topped out in late november so we kind of have a different pattern here and as I've shown you many times here on this channel, we've been tracking the Year of the Dragon since before February of this year. And I showed you going all the way back to 1928. So with effectively almost 100 years of data. <laughs> so we're not playing games here. We're really trying to decipher what these markets are doing and adding in these elements and trying to simplify it all for you guys. And I hope that this has helped. So we're here, we're just matching the Chinese year that we were in, the last exact version of it, Wood Dragon, and we topped in the last week of November. We had a decent correction right here into mid-December, which also was probably a full moon. Let me see if this will load up. Yep, basically, within a couple days of the full moon in December, and then we also just kind of continued off to another leg higher, pretty much right there into the end of the year. And this also, I remember checking it out. This was a lunar eclipse, I believe. Yes, it was. So we're looking at the eclipses in 1964. We have right here, December 18th, lunar eclipse, total lunar eclipse. 
of course, also the last eclipse of the year. But I want you to keep that in mind because we are about to approach our last lunar eclipse of this year on October 17th. And it's a lunar eclipse, although it's not a total lunar eclipse. So there will be differences in, regarding, in regards to the energy. Also, back in 1964, it was a much different world than it is today. So there's plenty of other things to consider. But again, we're just sticking to the esoteric right now. Now, getting back to the chart, you can see that the market clearly rallied into Chinese New Year, perfectly pivoting on Chinese New Year, and then was pretty much sideways for about 70 or 80 days, going on almost three months before heading into another leg higher for May, uh, before the substantial correction that it experienced, and probably the deepest correction, I believe, in around three years Interestingly enough, this correction right here was actually deeper than the one that happened on JFK's assassination. <laughs> and that was an actual assassination, so it shows you how little the market cares about those sorts of things. It's crazy. And no offense, I'm not trying to trigger anyone with what I'm saying there, with your belief in politics and Trump and whatever. I'm just letting you know that for the people that are worried about that sort of stuff when it comes to the investments, the market doesn't really give shit. It's pretty obvious. Look right here. That's the correction that we had for the JFK assassination. And then within a week, we were pretty much right back up and heading into new highs. So just to calm everyone down uh, who are worried that this will somehow lead to some sort of market crash, you just got to remember that the market doesn't care about presidents. They're using presidents as puppets for the populace. They're just talking heads. Now, I should get back to this. What's so wild about this correction that we had from May 65 into June 1965 is that the market topped out right before the first total eclipse of the year. And that's really important to mention. And it's really interesting to see how eclipses play a role in the traditional markets as well. Uh, but that's just a side note. And I bring that up because you guys have heard me say month after month, it's the March lunar eclipse of 2025 that I'm not playing games with. And I think that we have potential for this whole market to move up into the March 13th eclipse probably topping by the end of january or uh, sometime within february and of course isolated incidences with altcoins and certain tech stocks or whatever but generally speaking i think we will top out before the march 13th total lunar eclipse now that that's out of the way it'll be interesting if we actually copy 1964 the year of the wood dragon like we're in now because so far i mean it feels like we kind of are and let me show you why i'm going to hide this for a moment i'm going to bring up the s p and just kind of show you a couple of the similarities. Just look at the look at the structure. And I'm going to have this correction, this final correction over here, synchronized with this correction over here the best that I can. Let me widen this a little bit. All right. So a couple things to mention is how we peaked into July, followed by a pullback into August, and then we started making new highs in September. So let's look at 2024. We peak in July, we start a correction into August, and then we make new highs in September. Similar structure to what we're experiencing now. I think that it's best that if you guys have the time, line all this up. Don't take my word for it. Test it out for yourself. I'm not telling you to believe in anything that I'm telling that I'm saying here. Just keep your mind open to this stuff. That's what I've done. That's what I've been practicing over the past couple of years, past four to five years, and it's changed my life. No longer looking at the market for what we're being told through the news cycles kind of protecting my energy and just putting it towards what I believe actually runs this market, which is gematria, numerology, and astrology. And we've all heard the quote, you know, millionaires don't have astrologers, billionaires do. So keep in mind, because we have a FOMC meeting coming up immediately after the election, which I find that to be very sketchy. Um, but I want to bring this up because I said that there's a possibility that we could have a similar year to 1964. And again, we topped out after the election, just about a week or so after, and then had this correction into December. So I wanted to find like in our recent history where that could be the case. And this is actually making me think about how this upcoming election could have a weird, um, you know, results poll situation where it could go like 2000. Remember the year 2000 with the recount in Florida in the Bush and Al Gore election, which was also during the year of the dragon. 
<laughs> right here. So we have the Dragon Year synchronized as well. And I'm just bringing this up because I feel that this is a very awkward election and we probably won't get instant results. So we do have the event that happened back in 2000. It took five weeks for that to come to a conclusion. And coincidentally, the date that ritual ended, I believe, was December 12th. And look at how in 1964, the market kind of pretty much corrected into that time frame, mid-December. Um, imagine that. These years are so synced. It's crazy. And I'd go ahead and assume that if we were to have another weird election like back in 2000, that the market would sell off due to uncertainty, no different than it did in 64 in this kind of posture. And then naturally, uh, once the mess is over, it'll instantly recover. And I do not see our market turning out like the year 2000, which was the dot-com bubble. And I'll tell you why. It's because then we had a Shemitah year. And that's not the case for this year in 2025 or in 2026. So I don't see it turning out into that situation as well. And let me pull that up just so you have a visual. I'm going to be going back to 2001 and show you this red box over here is what I'm talking about. So we have this red box was the dot com bubble and also the 9-11 ritual, which kind of ended off that Shemitah year. Now, when I go to 2008, which I feel is very important to bring up because over the past 24 hours, I've personally seen and perhaps you've even seen countless analysts mentioning how the last time the Fed cut rates this much was back at exactly uh, September 18th of 2007 um, and I want you guys to consider why that's important and what they aren't realizing those analysts and now I'm not trying to throw shade at anyone it's just you guys come here for a different take on the markets and I'm going to reveal to you the machinations of why these corrections happen also why these bubbles form so back in 2007, we had this famous housing market, uh, you know, subprime mortgage crisis. They've made movies about it, documentaries about it. You all know. And as of yesterday, because of what the Fed did, many analysts are just jumping to this conclusion that we're going to repeat that because of the timing and this, that, and the third. Well, the start of this Shemitah year was September of 2007. It was September 13th, Rosh Hashanah the start of their sabbatical year, which lasted until September 30th of 2008. And if you look at the S&P chart in September 2008, now you'll know exactly why the market crashed immediately after the end of that Shemitah year. It was not about the rate cuts. It's a market ritual orchestrated by the same bloodlines that run the Fed, that run the entire banking system, and the same bloodli bloodlines who orchestrate these wars, including the one that's going on now. Now, it's important getting back to 2024 and 2025, we don't have a Shemitah year. Our most recent one was in 2021, September 2021 to September 2022. And you'll see that we did, in fact, sell off into the end of that Shemitah, and it was a perfect buying opportunity. And why? Is because then we moved into the year of the Jubilee, 2023. A positive time frame. That's our 50-year cycle, and the last one was in 1973, which was the Yom Kippur War. And that's why they started this whole ritual up again immediately after the 50th anniversary of the Yom Kippur War, because we were no longer in Jubilee. These people are sick. But based on where we are now, with all things considered, it's why I am not anticipating a repeat of 2007 or 2008 or 2001 or the year 2000. Although I am well aware that we're in an everything bubble. And that bubble will of course pop in due time. But not yet. It will be ritually done by the calendrical systems that run this whole show, not by the stuff that the Fed does, okay? The Fed is taking orders from somebody, remember that. But with that being said, it is important to bring up the month of October, since that it is known to be a month of black swan events, and although I am not calling for a black swan event in this situation, I do need to mention a crucial date, and that is October 14th. So let's quickly get into that, and then we'll get over into the charts for the crypto market. So I want you to keep this date in mind. Of course, with October 14th this year, you'll see the thing that I'm pointing out. It's the 68 double digit date numerology. 
I don't have to prove anything at this point regarding this particular date because it's proven itself. Every time we have these 68 date numerologies, something significant happens, notably just the last time, uh, this recent Sunday, with an assassination attempt on the president, who's somebody who's running to be the president, and a former U.S. president, and no, probably one of the most famous people on earth. So why this is significant is because October 14th will be the last 68 double digit date numerology before the U.S. election, the election that this man I just told you about will be in. And it also, also happens to be the start of the 42nd week of the year. And I've been bringing this up lately. I mentioned because the key number of this year is 24. The mirror of that number is just as important, so that's 42. And the 42nd week of this year also has a lunar eclipse. It'll be the last lunar eclipse of our year, um, and the next lunar eclipse we'll be having will be March 2025, about a half a year away from now, which gives us this window we're in from now until then since we entered eclipse season officially yesterday. So we have the date of October 10th, I revealed to you a little bit earlier ago, and October 14th to consider if we are to have any significant events before this election that could throw a wrench in the uh, normally scheduled program. <laughs> now let's get into the charts, uh, starting with Bitcoin, and just kind of check out where we're at right now. As I film today's video, Bitcoin has almost made it up to 64k quite a recovery so we have recovered back to pretty much last month's highs and we'll have a couple of days to figure out if bitcoin wants to break this key level of the late august 64k uh peak which you can see led to another pretty uh un uneventful i should say correction so let me turn off all of this noise and just get to the candles and have a clean chart for you all. So what we want to see for Bitcoin now is a break into this golden pocket territory above 64K. You could see the 618 FIB. Getting daily closes back uh, above that would be great because we would be reclaiming these resistance levels that we had through the end of August before another deep correction, and we would be seemingly in the posture of what we could consider a trend reversal. Now, of course, not just a daily candle close above 64,500 would be good. I would like to see a three-day candle close above 64,500. That'd be even better. And since we brought that up, it's important to actually load up our moving averages and we'll see this white moving average right here it's the 55 simple moving average that's a key level to reclaim for a more substantial recovery and we are right above it right now and the next three-day close comes in at the same time as our weekly close for the traditional markets and uh that's tomorrow night so if bitcoin can put on Another 2% and get to that like 64,500 level, that would be a very confident sign that we can start retesting 70K in October, pretty much around the final solar eclipse of our solar cycle. But until we reclaim that level of 64,500, which is about $1,000 from where we're trading at as I record this video, no parties just yet. We all know that a lot could happen in 24 hours in the crypto market, so stay neutral for now until we have confirmations. Now, getting back to the daily chart, we do have this green moving average right here. That's the 200 simple right above us. It would be ideal if we could re reclaim that level as well and start treating it as a support instead of a potential resistance. So keep that in mind because we were shortly above that back in August and we could not hold it as a support. So key thing to mention is if we could reclaim that level, let's start holding it as a support. And the last key thing to bring up in regards uh, to this analysis is our upcoming weekly close because it's actually going to be a bi-weekly close, a two-week candle. And you'll see the level that we're up against is 64,500. <laughs> so that's the most important level right now. Um, we need to get above 64,500. The weekly close will be coming in Sunday night, September 22nd. Um, if we can get a clean close above 65K without a CME gap, that would look great. 
and could finalize this corrective and sideways energy that Bitcoin has been stuck in for over half a year now. And my intuition says this is when we start playing out uh, the next phase of this bull flag that we're actively in. And let me just pull that up really quick for you. I believe I have the chart right here. The idea behind this bull flag is not for it to be the cleanest in the world. It's just to show you some of the key touch points that we've had and kind of eliminate the extremes in the data. So it's a tighter range than usual, starting at the all time high hitting as many touch points as possible with the most recent rejection. And again, on the supports at the bottom, it's just a parallel channel. And we've broken through the heart line of the parallel channel. We're heading towards the top of this resistance. We can be moving into the next phase of this if we not only clear this top, but if we can back test the outside of this resistance and break out further. And anything above 68K right now, I think would be all it takes. So keep those levels in mind. 64,500, absolutely important. If we can get above 65K and start closing three-day, five-day weekly candles, we're golden. If we can close off the month of September above 65K, beautiful. So interestingly enough, this bull flag, uh, I'm sure lots of analysts are talking about it, hence why I'm not talking about it as much because... Everyone and their mother knows about it. Um, but what's interesting about it is it has a measured move up to exactly 100K. So I just want to speak on this real quick. I personally suspect that there would be a pause for Bitcoin around 88 to 94K just to confuse retail into FOMOing into that breakout, perhaps a short like 10% correction from there, and then continue higher. So that'll be how the first phase of price discovery goes for Bitcoin, which I cover in depth in my crypto decoding blueprint. It's a four part series dedicated to this bull run leading into 2025. It's available at watersabove.com. You can see right here in this crypto decoding blueprint, I go over everything, all of the key notes, and I even have a sneak peek decode for the year of the snake, which I just started working on the full length version yesterday. Really excited to get that one out too. It'll be released in January of 2025, so you'll be getting access to this crucial information almost a half a year in advance. Really stoked to um, see how the rest of this run progresses. But again, I actually go through the remainder of this bull run and everything you need to know, even into 2025. It's available at watersbub.com if you're interested in step-by-step -step tutorials and how to decode this market. And that's where we'll wrap up today's video. Remember, for those who are primarily focused on XRP, we still need Bitcoin to break out into price discovery with a surge in Bitcoin dominance above 60% in order to see expansion in XRP. I've been saying this for over a year now in all of my videos, all of my podcasts, and all of my interviews, and I'm sticking to it. So don't get discouraged because we're getting really close to this final phase of the bull run. The solar eclipse is less than two weeks away on October 2nd. You can see the countdown right over here. It's important to mention how after the last lunar eclipse and this pair of eclipses surrounding the final solar eclipse of our solar cycle, that's when Bitcoin breaks out into the next phase. And I'll continue to keep you updated every step of the way. And for those who come over and join us behind the scenes in our mastermind community over at patreon.com slash waters above, I'm so grateful for all your continued support and looking forward to experiencing this next phase of the bull run cycle together. And I will have my new Red Pill podcast posted over there this Sunday. So until then, I appreciate every single one of you. And I'm wishing you all an amazing rest of your day in the matrix. Much love.